Hi, just real quickly, I'd like to say that you should totally subscribe because this, this is insane. This may come as a shock, but I love video games. Something about the way that they're made and experienced is so appealing to my brain, and because of that, over the years, it's become one of my favorite pastimes. Throughout my youth, there are multiple examples of games that define the person I am today. Minecraft, Roblox, Terraria, Five Nights at Freddy's, etc. But there was always one game that stood out to me over all of my life, and that would be Rayman. The first ever Rayman game I played was Rayman 2, and I remember getting to the third level of it and never getting past it. A few years later, I would get a Wii, and with it, Rayman Origins. And that's where most of my memories of the series stem from. In the past few months though, a thought in my head wouldn't leave me alone, with that being, where did the franchise go? And so, over the past month, I've dedicated my time to playing any and all Rayman games I could get my hands on to answer the question, what happened to Rayman? To answer that question, we need to go back to the year 1995, when the first Rayman game came out. The game released to positive reviews and still sits at a solid 8 out of 10 on Push Square, which I've never heard of up until a few days ago. The game that came out is vastly different to the original idea for the game. According to the wiki, Rayman was supposed to be about a boy named Jimmy who created a world on his computer which got infected by a virus, and in order to stop it, he takes on the persona of Rayman. In the release version of the game, the story goes as follows. Narrated by the wizard, in Rayman's world, there is a thing called the Great Protoon, which gives the world harmony and balance. A mysterious figure known only as Mr. Dark comes along and steals it, causing the world to lose its balance while creating monsters in its wake. And so Rayman is called into action. After that, there isn't much story to tell. At the end of every world, you get these little bits of dialogue with Batila the fairy, who is like, Rayman's mom, I think? And she gives Rayman powers such as being able to hover, run, hang, and grapple. But while the story is relatively linear, how does the rest of it hold up? First off, the art style in this game is beautiful. The game came out on the PS1 and was originally intended for the SNES, so the background art in the game is relatively downscaled, but it still looks gorgeous. There will be these sweeping plains areas, a forest, or a mountain. Not only that, but the animation on Rayman and the enemies is also fucking pristine. Secondly, the soundtrack in the game, while sounding bit crushed, is fucking fire. The music is composed by Rami Gazelle, who sadly passed away in 2019. Thirdly is the gameplay. Oh my god. I fucking hate playing this game. In my honest opinion, this game plays like shit. At first I thought it was cute and novel throughout the first world with only a few deaths here or there, and then I got to Banland. The way that Banland structures its levels is actually infuriating. There will be these insanely precise jumps that if you mess up at all, you will be set back to the halfway point or the start of the level due to the checkpoint system. Not only that, but you have a limited amount of lives and retries. Every single part of this game is incredibly unforgiving, and by the end of it all, you'll feel exhausted, because to be able to fight the final boss, you have to get all of the electoons, some of which allegedly require frame-perfect jumps or punches. The general consensus that I've seen from other reviews of the game is that the game is unfairly difficult, and those criticisms are completely fair. Apparently the reason as to why the game is so hard is because it was never playtested, and therefore the developers had no idea how absurd the majority of the game was. Rayman's moveset is that he can jump, punch, and use a taunt, which can be converted into a different power for a one-off level, which has a character that's the same race as Rayman, and that race is never shown off in any other game ever again. A neat little trivia fact about Rayman and his race is that he was meant to actually have limbs, but due to technical limitations, he was given the look that everyone is familiar with today. There's even a photo showcasing Rayman with limbs, which was an April Fool's joke posted on Facebook. Something that I forgot to mention before is that I'm going to try and rank all of the games to the best that I can. A ground rule is that it has to be the culmination of everything in the game. Starting with this game, which is a solid D. Great music and visuals, annoying gameplay. After the six hours of hell that I put myself through with Rayman, I was curious to see what would come next in the series, and that would be none other than Rayman Jr. Now, you might be wondering... Emily! 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 What, what the, the fuck, fuck is the Rayman, Rayman Jr.? And I'm glad you asked. Rayman Jr. is an educational game released in 1996 to try and teach kids the wonders of math and spelling. What's insane to me is that this game unironically controls better than Rayman 1. I don't know why, but it somehow feels more smooth despite the games being basically the same control-wise. In total, I played about an hour of Rayman Jr. until I realized that I got the gist of it. There's a lot more dialogue in this game as well, specifically from the Magician, who serves as a guide throughout all of the levels. There is a story to this game too. Mr. Dark is back and he steals what is called the Book of Knowledge, so it's up to Rayman to get it back. It's Rayman Jr. What else can I say about it? On the tier list, I'll be real, I'm gonna give this game a C. 
It's gonna go higher than Rayman M1. I know, crazy. Next up on our list is Rayman Designer. And this is actually the first game in the series where I couldn't get my hands on a copy of it. Made in 1997, Rayman Designer is the next game in the franchise that capitalized on the insane craze to make Rayman spinoffs. From what I've seen in YouTube videos, the game is just Rayman 1, but with new levels, and not only that, a built-in level creator called Mapper. People would create levels and then put them on a server where others could play them. Sadly, the server no longer works. The gameplay in Rayman Designer is also different now. There's no more electoons that you need to collect, but now it's all about finding Kings, and they reveal the exit sign once collected. The game also has a timer for individual levels which encourages players to try and get a better time. I really wish that there was a way to actually access old level files from the game and be able to put them into Mapper and play them. It would be like a time capsule of sorts and I think that would be really interesting to see. This game took Rayman 1 and then turned it into a different thing that wasn't Rayman Jr. So I'm gonna give it another C. Moving on, we have Rayman Activity Center. <laughs> Rayman Activity Center came out in 1999, and it's another Rayman 1 spin-off that is made to educate kids, but this time it's teaching them about math and spell. Same premise as Rayman Jr. What makes this game different from Jr. is the formatting. It's all in this hub world where I think you point and click to get around to do these different tasks. What has me baffled is why this game was made when they already had another Rayman educational game. Looking at footage of the game, there seems to be this I want to play Rayman Activity Center. I don't think it'll be any good though. I'm gonna put it in F tier. Rayman Activity Center wasn't the only game to come out in 1999, as Rayman 2 The Great Escape would come out later that year. I adore this game to death. The characters, the environments, the story, the atmosphere, etc. As the first game that I played in the franchise, it holds a very special place in my heart, and getting to replay it was an absolute treat. Released for the N64, Rayman 2 is the second mainline game in the series. This game marks a key point in the franchise, as it was the initial jump to 3D, and it rocks. At the start of the game, we get this cutscene following a flying pirate ship as a mysterious voice tells us that the pirates have taken over the land and captured its inhabitants. It then cuts to this big ship where it gives a number to how many slaves are on board. After a slow zoom in, it cuts again to Globox being dragged by two pirates to a cell where Rayman is being held. The two immediately recognize each other and embrace. The two talk and Globox takes a silver lump out of his mouth and gives it to Rayman, giving him the ability to punch and shoot little balls which I think are lumps. I'd also like to note here that in different versions of the games, there are some different changes. For example, all the characters speak gibberish while having captions appear on screen. In the PlayStation version, they actually speak, which is a change I honestly don't know how to feel about. You know, Globox, I think this might be the end. I feel as if the gibberish is a part of Rayman 2's charm. Anyways, Rayman and Globox attempt to escape, resulting in the two getting separated and Globox getting captured. This is when you're thrown into the first actual level of the game and meet Murphy, who is the physical manifestation of a tutorial. He speaks entirely in whispers and he also kind of creeps me out. Throughout the first level, he teaches you about the collectibles that you can find, as well as introducing three out of the 650 kids that Globox has. I am not fucking kidding. Globox has over 600 children in this game. From there, Rayman goes ahead to try and figure out where Globox is and frees a box of teensies along the way. They argue over who is the king, and then inform Rayman that if he wants to find Lai, who is this game's equivalent to Batila the Fairy, he has to go for the Fairy Glade where Lai is being imprisoned. But before Rayman is able to do that, the teensies have to do a progression check that they do for the rest of the game, where they ask for a certain amount of lums in order for Rayman to progress. After going through a portal, you are taken to the world map, which will look different depending on the version that you're playing. Going through the Fairy Glade, Rayman finds Lai and frees her by throwing some explosive barrels at a machine. Lai tells him that she doesn't have all of her power yet, and still offers Rayman a silver lum, granting him the ability to grapple onto these pink things. After being the Fairy Glade, another feature is shown off, and that is the bonus levels. Whenever you get all the lums and free all of the teensies in a level, you get the chance to play a bonus level where you are one of Globox's children racing against a pirate to reach a fairy, and from the looks of it, it doesn't contribute to anything for the rest of the game, and they just exist for fun. After the Fairy Glade is the Marshes of Awakening. As a little kid, this is where I got stuck because I had no clue that Sam existed, so I would always just replay the first two levels over and over. Speaking of Sam, he says that he saw Globox being captured by two pirates and offers Rayman a ride across the marshes to get to him. 
The next 3 minute water ski segment is one of my least favorite parts of this game. I wouldn't have a problem with it if it wasn't for the fucking obstacles that are in the water. The way that it works is that you can move from left to right as Sam goes forward. If you hit any object, you die and you're sent back to a checkpoint which there are only two of. There's this one part in specific where there is this fish that you have to dodge and for some reason it's the hardest part in this whole level. I don't know why. After that, Rayman goes off to the bayou where Razorbeard, who is the leader of the pirates, finds out that Rayman has made it to the swamp and so he eats a lump making the lump counter at the top right go from 1000 to 999. The rest of the level is trying to evade a pirate ship and also invading a pirate base to get to another swampy area. Next up is the Sanctuary of Water and Ice, which serves as the game's second lump check. Once you have enough, the four teensies from the first level grant you entry to the next level. The level itself takes place on a beach going underwater to get to the next area, which is the entrance to the actual sanctuary. Inside, Rayman plays Axel, who is this big thing. I don't know what it is, but it's a thing. He beats it and retrieves the first mask of Holocus. Something I forgot to mention earlier is that Rayman is trying to find all four masks of Holocus, and when he does, the pirates are basically just gonna all fucking die, I think. Upon picking up the mask, Holocus basically just shows up in a dream world and congratulates Rayman for his work, and then takes him back to the normal world. The next level is the hills, where you're invading more pirate bases and also meet a giant named Clark. Clark is sick and he needs a potion, and this is the only form of backtracking that's in this game, and that would be that you have to go back to the marsh to get the fucking potion. Luckily though, there's an alternate route at the beginning of the level which leads into where the potion has to be found. Rayman meets this ball with arms who leads him into this dream sequence where he's put in the cave of bad dreams. Ooh, spooky. The level consists of bones and stones all over the place. The ball thing reveals itself and chases down Rayman as he slides down a part of a cave and it gives you this weird POV where you're inside the ball thing's mouth and if you fuck up, he just eats you. There's a second part to the boss fight where he runs for his life and then you kick his ass afterwards. After doing so, he cowers in fear of his life in front of all of his gold thinking that's what Rayman wants and the game presents you a choice to either ask for the potion or be greedy and take all of the gold. Taking all of the gold gives you an alternate ending where Rayman is on a beach with the gold and he's fat. I never would have known this was a thing if I didn't zone out listening to what my friend was saying and accidentally picked the wrong option. Taking the right option though, Rayman goes back to Clark after getting the potion from the thing and then Clark runs through a wall, allowing Rayman to progress. I'd also like to say that beyond this point, except for one level later, he is never seen again in any games. Rest in peace, Clark. You were a real one. Rayman hitches a ride on a rocket and then goes into the ocean, where he is sent to the canopy. He goes across some spider webs, goes up a cliff, and then finds Glowbox. Upon freeing him, Glowbox helps Rayman get through the rest of the level by using his rain powers, which short circuits some lasers and also grows plants. He's also deathly afraid of pirates, so whenever one shows up, Rayman has to kill it and then console Glowbox before they can move forward. The first time this happens, Glowbox remembers that he has another silver lum and gives it to Rayman, giving him the ability to charge his shots. Sadly, at the end of the level, Glowbox does not come with Rayman as he needs to go visit his wife Uglet. Whale Bay. Rayman frees a whale named Carmen and follows it through the ocean. Next up is the Sanctuary of Stone and Fire, which is where the teen sees through their cutscene of asking for lumps and stuff. The level reintroduces the plums from Rayman 1, which is a neat little touch, and that's something I forgot to talk about in the Rayman 1 part of this video. The plums are something that you could ride on, and it's the same thing that, uh, that works in this game, except a little more clunky. Now, I may be somewhat stupid, but this level genuinely took me the longest out of all the levels because of the plum mechanics. I genuinely could not beat it for the life of- Uh, I looked at a let's play and there is a majority of the level that I just missed somehow. Rayman solves a puzzle. He gets the second mask of Polokas and then has another talk with him before being sent back to the real world. The echoing cave starts off with four switches that have to be pulled, and once that's done, there's a flying segment with a barrel that's honestly pretty fun, and nothing else of note happens. The Precipice is honestly one of my favorite levels. It starts with another Razorbeard cutscene where he learns about Rayman's whereabouts and sends another ship after him to deal with him. The whole level is trying to escape the ship on platforms that can and will fall at any moment. He then faces off against the pirates and wins, thus taking him to the top of the world, which is just a fucking roller coaster ride. Rayman then goes to the third and final sanctuary, the Sanctuary of Rock and Lava, where he has to dodge multiple vines that protrude from the walls while being on a moving platform. For some reason in this level you don't get a mask, and that's because in the next level, beneath the Sanctuary of Rock and Lava, that's where you have to fly through most of the level after being granted the ability to actually fly and not just hover. This power up is for this level and this level alone. After the flying segment, you fight off against this creature named Fouch, who shoots walls of fire at Rayman. 
He beats Fouch, of course, and then gets the third mask of Polokas and talks to Polokas again. Another cutscene with Razorbeard plays out, where he finds out Rayman has the third mask, and he gets really pissed off about it. Boom, Rayman's in the Tome of the Ancients, and this time, it's a graveyard sewer area. What is he doing here? I don't fucking know. He meets none other than fucking Clark for some reason, but this time he's being mind controlled, and he tries to kill Rayman. He beats Clark and frees him of his mind control. Clark is dead ass and never seen again. Rayman then takes a trip to the Iron Mountain, where he fights some pirates and then takes a blimp into the sky and then finds a rounded mountaintop on there, which is apparently where he needs to go because after leaving it, he finds a glet who has lost her children in some random areas. So Rayman takes a pirate ship to find them and bring them back there. Globox got his ass captured. Rayman brings back the kids, and then right before he goes to try and look for the fourth mask, one of the kids just hands it to him, which lets Rayman awaken Polokas, who just bombs all the pirate bases. Going back to the real world and the pirate ship, another cutscene with Razorbeard shows that he has a big robot in the works that he's gonna use to beat Rayman. The ship itself is in shambles after Polokas' attack, of everything being broken and in disarray. Rayman reaches the crow's nest where he finally meets Razorbeard face to face, and the two of them have a climactic battle where Globox nearly dies after flying off the ship. Rayman and Razorbeard then fall into the middle of the ship, where Rayman then beats the shit out of his robot. Razorbeard then escapes into space and blows up the ship with Rayman in it. The final cutscene shows everyone mourning the loss of Rayman by looking at his shoe right before he comes out of the forest and everyone celebrates. The end. Now, while the story is somewhat linear, the gameplay for the most part rocks. The actual combat feels fun to do while it is just button mashing when fighting regular enemies and the occasional boss. The ability to lock onto an enemy is a really nice touch, and if anything, it feels too easy. However, there are certain parts of the game that I hate. In the second to last level and the second phase of the Razorbeard fight, you ride on a flying rocket and with it, the camera then changes direction with whatever fucking, like, direction that you're going. It feels incredibly disorienting and it gave me the most trouble in this game, as half the time I had no fucking clue where I was. It also doesn't help that while in these segments the controls feel incredibly slippery, compare that to the other rocket segments that are on the ground. Those parts are awesome as you feel as you have more control over your movement. There's also the hovering mechanic. Anytime that I use it, I always overestimate how far I'm going to go because it's so incredibly slow. If it was made like 5% faster, I honestly would not have an issue with it, but for the most part, I'm in the middle of a hover and I feel as if I'm not going to make it over to the next platform. One final thing on the gameplay is the plum segments. I hate these parts. You have to turn away and fire in the opposite direction and it's somewhat finicky. Moving on, the star of the game is really, really cool. Rayman has these very faded colors which blend perfectly with the game's darker tone. There will be these dark greens or these very dark blues which make the game feel as if the world that Rayman is in is really in peril and in need of life. What sticks out to me is the use of 2D graphics on 3D graphics. Some of the character's eyes will be 2D-like with the snake I forgot the name of in the marsh. The first time I played it, I didn't even realize because of how well they work together. I don't know what half of these things are supposed to be besides the pirate. Pirates, Lie, and Rayman. Saying that though, I'm glad that most of the creatures in this game are very distinguishable and not Earth-like. It does a great job at world building as it introduces so many species, but sadly for the most part, doesn't elaborate on most of them besides the TNCs and Globox's family. For the tier list, I'd put this game in A tier. There's a lot of great things with this game, but there's also those few things that do bring it down, which I previously mentioned. I forgot to record a part about this, but um, in the same year that Rayman 2 came out, there was also an animated series that came out that ran for like four episodes. Uh, it was called Rayman the Animated Series, and uh, it, it's kind of nothing. There isn't really much that happens in it. Uh, the only thing that I can really comment on it is that like, the voice actor for Rayman is fucking Billy West. And if you don't know who that is, that he's the voice of Fry from Futurama and a lot of other stuff. Anyways, uh, yeah. After the failure of the TV show, Rayman would go back to making more spin-off games, starting with Rayman Brain Games in 2000. Rayman Brain Games was made to teach children the wonders of math and spelling. It's just Rayman Jr. For some reason, the two of them are labeled as different games, despite the fact that Brain Games is just an American localization of Rayman Jr. The only difference that I could find with Brain Games is that it splits itself into three levels that you can go into through a menu. Other than that, they look and play the exact same. So honestly, C tier. Putting it higher than Junior though. Sometime after the release of Brain Games in 2001, Rayman Plumio Cliques hit the scene and was a game for preschoolers where you play as a random person with Rayman and Globox's children. Some examples of the games are Hide and Seek, Drawing, and Puzzle. Throughout the game, Rayman serves as a guide to help you get through the levels. This is another one of those games that is incredibly hard to get your hands on due to how little popularity it got. Apparently, some people who bought the game in a package also received a Rayman shirt or a Rayman themed mouse which looks like this. 
Another fucking F tier. <laughs> Moving on, Rayman would go back to 3D games when Rayman M came out the same year. Rayman M is a competitive multiplayer game with modes like racing, where you run in a path until reaching the end against other people or AI. The other game mode is battle, whereas the name implies, you battle. The mode is split into three different modes, Capture the Fly, which is self-explanatory, Lump Fight, where you try and hit the other players and steal their lums, and Lump Spring, a game mode where you just try and collect lums. Everything in this game is split into leagues, with each one of them getting harder and harder. Not only that, but there's a character selection page where you can play as your favorite Rayman characters, such as Razor Wife, Henchman 800, Teensies, Tilly, Dark Rayman, Dark Glowbox, Henchman 1000, Glowbox, and of course, Rayman himself. This game isn't that bad. The best I could say is that it kind of drags on, so I'm gonna put it in B tier. Before doing my research, I had no clue that this game existed, and I'm not sure how many other people were the same. Anyways, Rayman Golf and Rayman Bowling both came out in 2002, where both 2D games wherein one you play golf and the other you play bowling. The bowling game becomes increasingly difficult as time goes on and more obstacles show up on the course. There is a grand total of 10 levels in the game. Rayman Golf is a monochromatic game with very little information on it. Both of these games were made for phones which is why there is not much known about them. Moving forward with the series, that is going to become somewhat common. Bowling will go into C tier and Golf will be going into F tier. At this point, Rayman hasn't had a mainline game in almost 4 years, but this is where it was all about to change with the release of Rayman 3 Hoodlum Havoc. Before talking about this game, I want to quickly talk about the advertising for it because it's something. The game got TV commercials, but also just picture ads, such as Rayman in a bathroom with guys looking at him. The caption reads out, no arms, no legs, big features. Another ad confirms this fact. I don't know how much I can speak about this ad without getting age restricted, but Rayman pisses his name into snow big and bold. The rest of the ads are relatively normal, and they just show off the game. A notable thing though is that Rayman and Globox actually speak in these commercials, and the same would be present in the game. Speaking of which, the actual game is crazy. The story goes as follows. An evil lum shows up and starts turning all other lums evil. They transform into these sandbag creatures with their mouths sewn shut and these big ol' hats. They start attacking anything and everything that they see. One of them spots Murphy, who then tries to fly away and wake up Rayman and Globox. Globox wakes up and seeing the threat tries to wake up Rayman but takes his hands in the process. Rayman wakes up and boom, the game starts. The first level, you're being carried by Murphy as he tries to get you to regain your health. Murphy also has a voice in this game and is voiced by Billy fucking West. Murphy drops you off at a forest area and teaches you the controls of the game and also makes a bunch of sexual comments. I was told that after Rayman 2 I'd be cast as a tormented artist who falls for a girl with great big and... Eyes. Rayman finds Glowbox in a barrel and then gets his hands back. From this point on, Glowbox is going to be by Rayman's side for nearly every level and he's going to talk a lot. Going back to the story, Glowbox gets chased down by some hoodlums and Rayman tries to go after him and fights off a hoodlum, which turns out to be the leader of them, Andre. Andre says that he's gonna make an army of hoodlums and drops a can, which Rayman promptly picks up and gains the ability to shoot tornadoes. Andre tries to escape and beats the shit out of a fairy twice in the process. He manages to end up inside of Glowbox somehow. Some teensies inform Rayman and Glowbox that they need to go see a doctor to cure Glowbox, and so the two of them set off on a journey to find said doctors. But to get there, they need to go into this portal thing. Before they jump in, Murphy flies off and says, the following. See you on Rayman 4! The two besties go into the portal and they end up in this sick ass surfing level with these insane visuals to back it up. They go through another portal and end up in another forest area where they try and find this doctor. Somehow ending up in a house, Rayman finds this red can which gives him the ability to punch harder. Andre in a fit of rage makes Globox drink a barrel of plum juice which he is allergic to, causing him to go crazy and take Rayman up a waterfall. The two make it to uh, an arena with this... Thing. Rayman kills the hoodlum inside of it and takes it for himself. They make it to the doctor who isn't able to do anything while playing the guitar with the Glowbox's arm and he redirects them to a different doctor. So Rayman and Glowbox go through another portal to a swampy area where Rayman fights a witch, a rich guy, and a big underwater robot. Before getting to the underwater robot, Rayman releases a teensy from a cage who gives him a grapple hook ability from a can. Making it to the portal again, they arrive at the second doctor who tries to play the drums with Glowbox's belly, which also fails to get rid of Andre, and so this doctor redirects them to another doctor. So they go through another portal and end up in fucking lava land. The two get separated and end up in a huge cave with an entire 
apparently new species that are invulnerable to Rayman's attacks. He ends up getting cornered by a bunch of these things, which causes him to fall and get captured. After his capture, he is forced to fight Reflux. He wins, of course, and the king of these things gives Rayman the ability to turn black lums back into red lums, as well as giving back Glowbox. They make it out of the cave and get to the next doctor, who is... Get energy! The three doctors come together and Andre gets so pissed off that he escapes from Glowbox and finds Reflux, convincing him to take over his race to try and kill Rayman. Rayman and Glowbox set off, end up in a mountain, do a little snowboarding, end up in a secret base, destroy said base, find Reflux who's become this big monster thing, destroy him, and turn all the lungs back to normal. Overall, a pretty normal progression in story that the game tells. If anything, I think what makes it endearing to me is the dialogue that mostly comes from Glowbox. He's such a lovable idiot, and his chemistry with not only Rayman, but Andre too is really, really fun. Rayman himself speaks a lot in this game too. There are several instances of him speaking in cutscenes and even during levels. I think it's crazy that Billy West is in this game, but he does not voice Rayman and instead voices Murphy. Enough about that though. How is the gameplay? Rayman 3 builds upon and improves the controls from Rayman 2. Everything feels much more smooth and it doesn't have the same jankiness that 2 had for the most part. As mentioned previously, there are these cans that you find around in each level. These cans give special power-ups and can also change how Rayman looks. To avoid making him overpowered, the game gives a time limit on each of the power-ups. In total, there is 5 powers. The Tornado Can, Metal Fist Can, Lockjaw Can, Shock Rocket Can, and the throttle copter can. All of these power-ups are used throughout the game's levels to progress through them. The game very rarely throws out one of these cans for fun if not for the purpose of trying to indicate what the player should do or where they should go. This game is also a lot more combat oriented instead of exploration based. The addition of a combo score bar up in the top left corner as well as the new ability to curve punches towards enemies after locking onto them are all new features and all welcome additions. The game features a lot more boss fights than the Rayman 2 did, some of which are really fun to play but then there's also some fights that are just enemy rushes after a boss fight with a big ass leg machine, which in itself is really annoying as you have to press a button then then guide a rocket to hit a guy controlling it, which is difficult as you're under a time limit and he still moves as you try to do it. Another annoying ass boss fight is Razoff, who is a rich guy who you fight in his mansion. The entire time he tries to shoot at you and then runs away for a solid two minutes, leaving you to try and chase after him and get lost. Sometimes he even locks you in a room and tries to snipe you. His second phase is a lot more fun as it involves you trying to find a power up around the room as he tries to kill you while on a wrecking ball. There's also a third phase to the final boss where you have these slippery controls while trying to hit a somewhat accurate area on reflux and it is not fun to play. At a certain point, he summons a bunch of hoodlums which he destroyed otherwise he regains health and it's borderline impossible to throw bombs in this part which is the only way you can damage the hoodlums. Who knows? Maybe I just suck. One more notable change is the level system. Instead of having to beat a level and then go back to the hub world, all the levels feel continuous with Rayman either going through a pathway or jumping down a hole to get to the next level, and it feels really smooth. The levels themselves are all beautiful as hell for 2003. A great example of this is the one where Rayman crosses a bridge and tries to get up this grand castle that's entirely made up of small particles. It feels so otherworldly to play through, and the same can be said for all of the levels. The game also shows you how much completion you got in that level with a 5 star system. Each star is split into 20% and with each 20% completion you get a higher star ranking. At the end of a level the game also tallies your score. If you get enough score after a few levels you can unlock some bonus content which you can access through the main menu. These goodies will either be training videos for the hoodlums on how to kill Rayman, a game called 2D Madness which is a Rayman 1-esque mini game because the game was not designed for 2D it makes it harder to play than it was actually playing through Rayman 1. There's also a mini game called Racket Jump which is a tennis mini game. Crush which is avoiding a wrecking ball, Raise Off Circus, which is a first-person on-rails game where you play as a boss, you fight as Rayman, but instead preparing for Rayman to show up by shooting at wooden cutouts. You get the idea. There's a total of 12 mini-games, which are all incredibly different besides the last one, which is just 2D Rayman again. The music in the game is also awesome, which is something that the series is still going hard in the paint for. They also scrapped a bunch of characters that would have mostly just been enemy types, but they also scrapped fucking Clark. On the tier list, I'd honestly put Rayman 3 Hold'em Havoc at an S tier. It plays well, has some great humor to it, it was also a great improvement slash overhaul to Rayman 2's gameplay. For some reason, Rayman 3 ends off on a cliffhanger of Andre being reborn, and that led to the game Rayman Hoodlum's Revenge, which was made specifically for the Game Boy Advance in 2005. The plot of this game is that Andre is trying to recreate Reflux and he succeeds so that he can try and kill Rayman. 
Andre takes over Globox while Reflux gets beaten by Rayman. Rayman somehow frees Globox and Andre just flies off and is never seen again. The end. The gameplay is interesting. They keep the cans from 3, but everything is in an isometric viewpoint and the graphics will look more like Rayman 1 than 3. It does follow the system that Rayman 2 had of collecting. At the end of each level, there is a scorecard that shows the amount of lums in the level and the amount of teensies. An interesting thing that this game does is that it actually lets you play as Globox for some of the levels, which is something that the series has never seen before. The game remains consistent with the series of having good music, so I'm glad about that. Everything just feels big crushed about it though, which makes sense considering that it's for the gameplay. For the tier list, I'd say that this game is definitely a B tier. Like, everything about it is fine, but it doesn't really stand out. After Halim's Revenge, things get a little rocky with the franchise. Development on Rayman 4 had started, and it seemed to be going along well until a bunch of development changes happened and the project was cancelled in favor of a new game called Rayman Raving Rabbit. This game would be about Rayman fighting the rabbits as they try to invade his planet. The story behind the rabbits is insane. In Rayman 1, they were shunned for being stupid, so they hid underground being spiteful and turned into the rabbits. The game itself would have been another 3D platformer like Rayman 2 and 3 before it, and then the game was canned. The game was then turned into the Rayman Raving Rabbids that everyone is familiar with today. Released in 2006, Rayman Raving Rabbids is a 3D party game that marked the birth of the Rabbids franchise and somewhat of a downfall with the Rayman franchise. The story of the game is that Rayman is having a picnic with what I think is Globox's children before they get taken underground and rabbits pop out. Rayman is then taken away by Sergei, I think that's how you say it. The rest of the plot is Rayman beating minigames to earn plungers and then trying to escape from the arena through a window in his chamber. He gets out and goes back to the picnic spot, only to realize that he forgot Globox's children, so he tries to go back into the hole that the rabbit made, and he just gets stuck. End of story. The gameplay is a minigame collection consisting of varying minigames going from on-rail shooters to rhythm games with rabbits covers of the song. Each segment of the game is split into four minigames, and then after those four, Rayman earns a costume which he can mix and match in his wardrobe or a music disc. In the main menu, there's a score mode where you can earn points to try and unlock bonus content. As for graphics, it looks similar to Rayman 3 of the same types of visuals. In the main arena, looking at the crowd, they are all three-frame PNGs that bounce around, and I think that's really funny. This is actually one of the only games in the franchise that was released on Steam. The other two were Origins and Legends. Another interesting thing is how different it is across platforms. It was released for the Game Boy, where instead of being a minigame collection, it was a 2D side-scroller which had most of its elements taken from the cancelled Raving Rabbids game. The game also reintroduces Lai, and she looks like this. On the DS, Raving Rabbids is a 3D game which is a side-scroller with minigames included that exist to be able to progress, which is insane. Where does it belong on a tier list, though? Rayman Raving Rabbids is genuinely a fun game that I'll go back to from time to time. That being said, though, it's gotta go in B tier. A year later, Gameloft would release the best game ever, Rayman Kart. Think of Mario Kart 64, but made for a phone and features Rayman characters with the rabbits included. This game flops so fucking hard. S plus tier. In November of the same year, a sequel to Rayman Raving Rabbids would be released titled Rayman Raving Rabbids 2. I remember watching a really specific video where it started with some guys playing with some plushes and then a rabbit plush showed up and ruined everything and then the actual gameplay started. Don't remember the name of that video and I want to. The game's plot is that the rabbits have taken over Earth and it's up to Rayman to stop them. Does he succeed? No. He doesn't even show up in the ending. The minigames are split into different categories based on countries like the USA or France. I've never actually played this game, but buying a copy of it is so cheap that I might do it one day and play it with some friends. This game also got a DS version, but this time it was an actual port of the game instead of a different game altogether. This game is an improvement from one, and the minigames are definitely a good time. B tier again. Ubisoft must have been feeling really great about themselves at this point because a year after Rayman Raving Rabbids 2, they made Rayman Raving Rabbids TV party. Gameplay is the same as the last two, it's just another minigame collection. However, this marks the end of the Raving Rabbids era. I'll be real, it's gonna go in a C tier this time. The Rabbids would go on to make several new games and still have games coming out as of 2023. As for Rayman, it's not looking too great. It would be another three years before the next Rayman game would come out, with that being the smashing success that is Rayman Origins. Originally intended to be a prequel to all the other games in the series, Origins was going to show the creation of Rayman and 
and how he became a hero. This was eventually scrapped for the story that exists today. That story being that evil beings of an underworld of sorts getting pissed off at Rayman and friends for being loud as shit while sleeping. They attack our heroes resulting in their capture and it's up to Rayman with the help of his friends to restore the world back to its peaceful state. On his travels, he frees fairies who give him powers such as the ability to punch, swim, hover, wall run, and shrink. He reaches the top of a mountain and is told he needs to free all the kings before he can progress forward. He does so and then he goes back to the mountain and he gets teleported through a portal and makes his way over to a sky city. Throughout the game, the magician does make a return in this, but as a teensy, who counts how many limbs you collect at the end of each level. On the level where you fly to the sky city, he tells you that you can only go back and to progress to the next level, you have to collect enough lums in that level, which is kind of a pain. In the actual Sky City, it's revealed that the Magician was the main villain the whole time, and his plot was to take over the Glade of Dreams, which is the world that this game takes place in. Also, there's a paper in his room that says, I heart Mr. D, which is presumably Mr. Dark. Rayman chases him down, and the Magician crashes his ship into the core of the city, causing it to break into pieces as Rayman is sent falling down until he lands at the tree from the start of the game. While the story is incredibly linear, the gameplay absolutely excels. Rayman Origins takes Rayman 1 and improves upon it in every way possible. As a return to form for the series, Origins is a 2D platformer opposed to the 3D, hence the Origins in the title. The controls feel smooth and refined for the next generation of consoles, and they still hold up to this day. The craziest part about that is that they managed to make underwater levels unironically fun as hell. The controls is smooth as butter, and they aren't made to mash a button over and over to move around. Not only that, but the levels are all about trying to find the Electunes again, and they aren't put in places where you have to do frame-perfect jumps to be able to collect them. Instead, they're put at the end of a level, earned by collecting lums, beating levels at a certain time limit, or found in secret areas you can search for when you start hearing them crying for help. Now, the point of the Electunes is kind of varied. Their main purpose is to be able to progress through the game, as there are some levels dedicated to crossing a bridge made out of them, but another thing that they do is you're able to unlock character skins and some bonus levels when you have enough of them. That's not even the biggest thing either. For the first time in Rayman history, besides their crowding, there is four player multiplayer, which results in a much better time than just playing by yourself. What makes the co-op so fun is that each person isn't Rayman, as Globox and the Teensies are playable in this game with multiple variants. As for the level design, they went all out with making the worlds visually distinct. Like, there's a forest, a desert, a glacier, an underwater area, a mountain, the previously mentioned sky city, and the underworld. In all of these worlds, the enemies are also different to fit the aesthetic of the area. Along with the regular platforming, the Mosquito from Rayman 1 comes back, which you can ride for a certain few levels, which makes it a nice change of pace from the regular platforming. As for the visuals of the game, an entirely new software was made for it, known as UbiArt Frameworks, which was made to make animating games incredibly easy for developers, and it led to some of the most visually appealing environments in the Rayman series. I genuinely cannot express in words how much I love the visual style of Rayman Origins. It's so fucking awesome. The game also goes back to not having fully voiced characters, but instead just has them make noises, or they just speak in pig line. Thinking about this game a lot makes me realize how much I adore it in comparison to the other games. I thought that would have been because it was the game I grew up with for the most part, but after replaying it, I can confidently say that this game belongs in S tier on the tier list. Now, in 2012, Rayman Jungle Run was released for iOS and Android devices. The game itself was a runner game where you just run from the left side to the right side of the screen and try and complete levels. You couldn't go backwards in these levels, which was kind of a bummer. The game uses the same visual style that Rayman Origins has, and I think that's really cool. I remember playing this game as a kid, and I thought it was pretty fun from what I remember, but there wasn't that much substance to it, sadly. I'll put it in C tier. Another thing is that this game is no longer downloadable on iOS or Android. Two years after the success of Origins, Rayman Legends was released and managed to improve upon Origins in almost every way. The story has become more linear to the point of where it's just get through the levels, save the teensies, and stop the magicians, which there are now five of. The gameplay has remained the same, with the introduction of instead looking for electunes, you're now looking for teensies that are spread throughout the entire level with two teensies that you have to actively look for. Upon occasion, challenges will appear next to the base levels in which you can collect up to three teensies so that you can also try and save them all. The game also reintroduces Murphy as a character that you can control with one or two buttons on a controller. His purpose is to move things out of the path for Rayman so that he can proceed. There's also a level where Rayman turns into a duck. The menu area has been completely overhauled for this new world, as instead of being in a tree, it's in this wooden area with cabinets all around it, and when you jump into them, you'll be sent to the level selection area for the world. At the end of each world, there's also a level that's completely rhythm-based, with such great songs as Castle Rock, Glue Glue, and Granny's World Tour. 
In my personal opinion, I think the whole painting system is cool, but it doesn't really compare to what Origins had going with like these really smooth transitions through worlds. On the topic of Origins, there is a painting which takes you to 40 Origins levels that have been remastered. To access it though, you need to use a scratch ticket, which you can collect at the end of a level if you have collected enough love. The thing is though, is that the scratch system is entirely luck based. Using them, you can either get more teensies, lums, pets, and the Origins levels. The pets mean basically nothing as over time they just give you lums and then they have their own rooms. As for being able to play different characters, it still exists within this game and it is expanded upon. Instead of unlocking them with electoons, you unlock characters through getting lums in a level. The amount that you have to collect goes up to a million lums total. There's also new characters called princesses and they all have their own names. You unlock them by beating challenges in different worlds. Each character also has their own little text blurb underneath them which shows a little insight on them which is pretty cool. The music in this game goes fucking nuclear. There's the already mentioned music levels, but each level has its own track like Origins did. Somehow, they still managed to keep the same sort of outlandish style that Origins had by using some more untraditional instruments. Legends does still use UV art frameworks, and even in the two year time span that it took for this game to come out, all of the visuals look more enhanced and prettier than they did in Origins. The culmination of all these things is what makes Rayman Legends my favorite game in the whole series. Everything about it feels so great, and when it came out it got me excited for what's to come next with the series, but this is basically the end of it. In the same year that Legends came out, Rayman Fiesta Run released to iOS and Android. The game was a side-scroller runner game that you could turn around in. The goal of it was to try and make it to the end and beat the game. The game also introduced some gadgets that you could buy, which were a magnet for lums or a golden heart. There were also a lot of themed Rayman and Globox outfits that came out, but sadly in 2019, due to an update with operating systems on phones, they weren't compatible anymore, and so Fiesta Run was taken off the App Store. The only remnants of it are images on the wiki and the videos uploaded to YouTube. I remember faintly playing this game for a bit, and it was honestly a pretty solid mobile game. Um, Put it in C tier. In 2015, the next mobile game in the series will be released, with that being Rayman Adventures. Rayman Adventures was just a rehash of Legends with very little new content. The difference is that some of the levels are different and that they made. Exclusives like a cut the rope game. The game itself is that Rayman is small as hell and stuck in a forest. The game has challenges and also a cameo from Mr. Dark himself, which is pretty cool. He gives Rayman quests to complete, but other than that, he doesn't really have any other purpose. There isn't much else to say on this game. After playing a bit of it by using a free trial of Apple Arcade, I can safely say that it controls well for a mobile game and isn't that much of a slog to get through, so honestly, I'll put it in B tier. Now that we're done talking about the games, how about some other stuff relating to the series? First is the amount of lost media that comes with the franchise. When Rayman 2 came out, there was a website made for it that also had a game on it called Globber. Apparently, the game was a Frogger style game, but instead of a frog, it was one of Globox's children. This photo is all that remains of the game, as it is now impossible to play with Flash being gone. Another game that is partially lost media now is another Flash game called Rayman vs. the Cull Cut. The gameplay was trying to type words and trying to match them with what was on screen, resulting in a victory. The last game I want to discuss is Rayman Garden. Up until 2018, there was basically nothing on this game. It was made for phones and came pre-installed on a certain type of phone, which did not sell well at all. The gameplay for it was trying to navigate a square garden, trying to escape while being chased by Dark Rayman, and that was the whole game. As for merge, this is where things get a little bit crazy, and I apologize in advance because I'm about to start listing shit like crazy. When the first game dropped, they released stickers, two keychains, two watches, cookies, a fucking Rayman themed DualShock controller, a snapback cat, a coin wallet, a bouncy ball, and an earring. For Rayman 2, they made a promotional statue, a slinky, all toy tins, more stickers, a yo-yo, a watch, a beach ball, a radio, a Happy Meal line only sold in France, a little figure of him beside a bush, a shoulder bag, Nokia phone covers, a pen, and shirts. For Junior, they released this controller. What the fuck? In Rayman 3, they made a bag, a lum plush, more stickers, another bag, a flask, a mug, a figure of him on a mushroom, a Rubik's Cube, a Rayman plush, 
a statue of him on a scepter, a stamp, and a sticker for the Game Boy exclusively. For the DS, they made a cool case for it. There was this pencil case, a statue of Rayman riding a rabbit, and a ruler for raiding rabbits. For Origins, they made an art book, a keychain, slapping bags, and slapping gloves. As for Legends, there was a pin and fucking surfboards. They also made a 20th anniversary coin, a shit ton of shirts, some beanies, and a U2's figure. And that's about it for merch unless I've missed something, and if I have, please tell me in the comments. And then there was cameos for stuff that he was in, starting with a music video that he was in by Royal V, multiple cameos in the Rabbids comments, he was in Enfer and Parody, he was on the fucking Mad TV show where he got his own episode, he was in Sonic Trouble, Cosmic Family, Hype the Time Quest, Monster Jam, Splinter Cell, Asterix and Obelix, Academy of Champions, Football, Minecraft, Trials Fusion, Just Dance, Super Smash Bros. for Wii U as a trophy, Uno, Soul Hunters, Grotopia, Brawlhalla, Sm Super Smash Bros. Ultimate as a Spirit, Ubisoft All-Star Blast, Idle Miner Tycoon, Oddballers, and Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope, where he will be available to play as DLC later this year, and he looks fucking great. I originally recorded this script back in like July, I think. Right now it's December and the DLC has come out and it's really good. It's like a love letter to the franchise. There's a bunch of references to all the games in it. I think my favorite part of it is probably the whole thing with the main villain being like this maestro. He even mentions Glowbox in one of his like songs that he sings in a cutscene and I think that's really neat. There's not really that much else that I can comment on it. Not only that, but in October, Netflix released the uh, the Captain Laserhawk show, and I watched that like the week it came out. I thought it was pretty pretty good. I don't know. I, it could have been better. I might do a video on it. I like Bullfrog a lot. I think he's really funny. The whole if you haven't seen it, the whole show is about this like raging homosexual or something who's like trying to get back at society. It's like a di it's a dystopia thing, kind of like um, cyberpunk, but with like a lot of Ubisoft characters. That does include Rayman, who has his own arc in the show. He starts off as this like TV show host from another dimension, and then he like goes on this downward spiral into drugs and hookers and it's it's cool to see i think that it's handled really well and i feel like if i saw it with a different character it wouldn't be as interesting in the in the last episode of the show he ends up just changing his identity to ramon and he slicks back his hair and he just shoots up all the tv producers except for one which like plot twist it turns out to be this girl who we thought was good what? the show might go to season two and i really hope that it does because i feel like the ending of it is just it's really meh and just kind of it leaves more to be desired the big thing about this though is that it's drawn a lot more attention to rayman because he's kind of he's kind of the titular character in this despite not really being in the title they also have the rabbits in these for like a fucking second and they're these like massive monsters from another dimension and it's really funny this video was originally gonna end on more of a sour note because there wasn't really anything happening with the series but with this newfound interest with a lot of people, with Rayman, I feel as if there's hope. There might be something in the future. I think the one of like the lead something on uh, the DLC said that he'd really like to make a new Ray like mainline Rayman game, and if that means like Rayman 4 coming out, that'd be really sick to see. Not only that, but there's also fan projects that are starting up or have been in development for a while, and I think those coming out will also help out. Like, there was uh, Rayman Redemption, which came out in 2020, which was this, like, big remake of the original Rayman game, and it was- I played it for a bit, it was- it's really good. It's like, all- all my gripes with the original Rayman are just kind of diluted, and I think that's really cool. And I hope more stuff like that comes out. Anyways, uh, I've blabbered on for way too long, and I need to finish editing, because I have given a release date for this, and it's not finished yet, so... Uh, hopefully I get that done. Thank you for sitting for this 15-minute long video, I think it is. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, uh, I don't know, other normal YouTuber shit. Next video is gonna be on, like, anime, or... Killer 7, I don't fucking know.